Some new watches from the UK, a mean looking murdered out masterpiece, and a serious watch that doesn't take itself too seriously. It's episode 75 of A Week in Watches, a semi-weekly look back at news stories, releases, and more from the watch industry. I'm Zach Weiss, co-founder of Worn and Wound, and I'll be your host today. Spring is almost in the air, watches and wonders is just around the corner, but first is British Watchmakers Day. We'll be there on the 8th of March, and I'll be sure to bring you that news in the next episode, if I'm not too jet-lagged, so no promises. But first, let's focus on this week. We've got some great new releases to talk about, but before we do, this episode of A Week in Watches is presented by the all-new Tissot PR516 Mechanical Chronograph. Based on a beloved 1970s design, this thoroughly modern reinterpretation is powered by a value hand-wound movement, all for under $2,000. Stay tuned for later in the show to learn more. Also, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks in advance. On with the show. Manasse channels their inner dark night. Manasse is one of those brands that still feels like a hidden gem. A Japanese independent that is an offshoot of a company that specializes in cutting tools and drill bits, Manasse's approach to watch design is really unlike any other brand. Though rooted in Japanese culture and aesthetics, their approach to watches feels developed in a silo outside of traditional watch design. Their cases in particular, which often feature several crystals and zuratsu polished details, are truly objects in the round, not just pretty from the top down. Their dials, if you can really even call them that, are structures unto themselves, yet manage to include traditional Japanese crafts and materials like urushi lacquer, hand painting, and other techniques. Check out my review of the Manasse DeVito from a couple of years ago for a deeper look into that. As for what's new, Manasse announced a 25-piece limited edition called the Horizon Gen DLC. Gen being a translation of a kanji symbol that can mean depth, darkness, mystery, or simply the color black. As you likely already know, this is a murdered out version of their uniquely shaped Horizon model, and it looks damn good. The Horizon case measures 38 millimeters wide by 51 millimeters long with a 12 millimeter height, which sounds odd on paper, but given the watch's bowing rectangular shape, integrated lugs, and fully domed profile, they make more sense. Clearly, it has been coated in a black DLC, which manages to emphasize its sleek lines rather than obscure them. But the dial is really what has taken well to the murder treatment. I'm typically not a fan of blacked out watches because despite looking cool, they are kind of illegible. But the Horizon gets around this issue because of the structural nature of the dial. There are enough facets and surfaces for something always to catch the light. Polished rather than full black hands help as well. The Manasi Horizon Gen DLC comes mounted to a fitted black rubber strap that looks the business and is priced at $4,700. The watch is available to order now, and as said before, there are only 25 of these. Ferrer takes on the whole world, again. Back a thousand years ago in November 2019, Ferrer launched a trio of world timers that featured a more traditional design language for the UK-based brand, yet still managed to have the abundance of character one expects from them. They were a hit, they sold out fast, as I recall, and everyone was excited to strap them on their wrists and travel the world. And then 2020 happened, and no one went anywhere. Needless to say, pretty soon after, making travel-focused watches was not a top priority for brands. And eventually, the fairer world timers went into a state of perpetual sold outedness Well, they're back, and there is a new variety as well. Returning from the first generation are the Rocher and Markham models. The Rocher was perhaps the crowd favorite of the first series, featuring a handsome deep blue center with Clos de Paris texture combined with a white world timer ring and 24 hour index. Additionally, it had large molded loom numerals that gave it a sporty attitude. The Markham, which I reviewed back in 2019, returns as well. Sort of the panda of the group, it had an ornate stamped spiraling pattern on a white surface contrasted by a black world timer ring and 24 hour index. This model forgoes the loom blocks for polished applied markers with black fill. Overall, this one felt a bit dressier than the Rocher. While very similar to the first gen, there are three changes of varying significance to note, with the first two dial side. Of lesser significance, the date windows are now round, which is just a touch cleaner than the previous version. But more importantly, the hour and minute hands have gone from a flat trowel shape to a stronger three-dimensional alpha design. This was a smart change as that last handset just felt out of place. 
The third change is to the movement. The ETA 2893 is gone, replaced by a customized Salida SW330-1. Typically, these have a fourth GMT hand, which was swapped with a world time disc. Additionally, they have the mainspring from the SW330-2, extending the power reserve to 50 hours. With the two returning models is a third new version that replaces the very blue Aldrich model, called the Fox. That's Fox with an E, which I'm assuming isn't pronounced Foxy. It's basically an all green version of the Rocher, but like a very nice, rich, dark green with matching dial, world time ring, etc. As a person who's drawn to green watches and other green things, this really hits a note for me. The new Ferro World Timers are available to order now for $1,695 on leather and will begin shipping early March. I'm curious, what are your opinions on World Timers? Useful complication or usefully complex? Motorsport watch fans rejoice. The new Tissot PR516 mechanical chronograph is a modern and faithful interpretation of a beloved 1970s racing three register chronograph, complete with a glowing tachometer bezel and 41 millimeter stainless steel cushion case. Powering the PR516 is the new to Tissot Valjou A05.291 caliber, a 7753 derived movement. It has some major modifications, such as conversion from automatic to hand wound. Now in place of a rotor is a cool decorated bridge and a clear view of the escapement. Utilizing a hand wound movement not only gives the new PR516 some vintage cred, it helps manage overall thickness at a wearable 13.7 millimeters. Impressively, the A05.291 also offers some modern performance specifications, like up to 68 hours of power reserve, meaning you won't have to wind it daily. Formidable magnetic resistance thanks to a Nivicron hairspring, hacking seconds for precise time setting, and a frequency of 28,800 beats per hour for accurate timekeeping. The Tissot PR516 mechanical chronograph is peak retro Tissot in style, but with a thoroughly modern movement inside, all for under $2,000 on a steel bracelet. Hit the link below to learn more. All right, let's get back into it. Have no fear, the new Fears is here. I'm sorry about that title, but I shopped a few and that was the best I could do this week. UK's Fears has built a very solid reputation and customer base over the last few years. And they've done so with two kind of surprising elements. The first is a fairly dress focused lineup of watches that aren't explicitly mid-century or on trend as the case may be. Cushion cases, brushed metal dials, mother of pearl for heaven's sake. And the other is no compromise on prices. While so many others have touted the best deal around, Fierce kept their watches mostly over 3K, backed by high quality finishing and strong branding. And I really respect that. Anyway, with this momentum, they're primed for a new launch, and that's what we have, a new launch. A new line, even. Okay, it's actually a new take on an older line, but it's so different, it might as well be new. The new Redcliffe collection is a marked departure from the brand's other offerings. Far sportier and more contemporary, they feature a round 39.5 millimeter stainless steel case, no cushion this time, brushed and polished with a rounded bezel. The case is, well, pretty straightforward. That said, they are 150 meters water resistant and a hair under 10 millimeters. So clearly meant as a capable and wearable everyday watch. From boardroom to surfboard, as the people say. The dials are a departure for Fears as well, though clearly continue their generally conservative styling. There is a slightly raised center surface on which are applied Loomfield markers. Encircling this area is a slightly lower level with subtle graining that features a printed index. A date sits at three the Fierce logo at 12, and the brand's signature handset, which is like a rounded, blunted syringe, is present as well, but now filled with loom. Four colors share this layout, pewter gray, raven black, cherry red, and one in mallard green that is only available at their Bristol boutique. There are subtle graining and plating differences between them, though the pewter gray stands out. This model has a vertically brushed surface and is the only with a pop of color in the form of cyan accents. Lastly, it's worth noting the dials are German made. The red cliffs are accompanied by three link bracelets with a mix of brushed and polished surfaces and a micro adjust clasp. Additionally, they include color coordinated textile straps for a more casual look. Powered by the La Jupere G100, the red cliffs come in at 3,300. Stately and stoic, the Red Cliff is a logical addition for fears. Sporty but not aggressive, formal but not uptight. But I wonder if they have as much personality as their other models. But enough from me, what do you think about these new models? A move in the right direction? Frederick Constant finds their funny side, with a little help. Frederick Constant is many things. A watch brand, of course. An affordable or accessible luxury brand, most certainly. 
a manufacturer of some pretty cool in-house movements, including perpetual calendars and tourbillons? Rightfully so. But funny, they are not. They are serious Swiss watchmaking, okay? You got it? Don't mistake them for some casual horology, which is why this most recent project is so surprising. Enter Seconde Seconde, the enfant terrible du genre of the watch industry. With an approach that is the visual equivalent to a one-line joke, Seconde Seconde has been hired by brands ranging from Timex to Moser to, well, stir things up a bit, poke some fun, disrupt, if you will, and usually at the expense of the watch or the brand itself. Always limited in nature, they are watches for those so inside this hobby that a little self-awareness is required. With that said, no brand has gone quite as far as Frederick Constant has with their new collaboration. And I have to say, it's not just probably my favorite Sacon Sacon collab, it might be my favorite Frederick Constant to date. So to start, back to Frederick Constant being a serious brand. The goal of this watch wasn't to let their hair down or laugh at themselves a bit. No, that's really not their style. Rather, it was to teach to market even, the idea that their watches are handmade, or assembled at least. I mean, I don't think people thought machines put these things together fully like a moon swatch, but hey, they really want you to know that these are Swiss-made watches assembled by the Swiss in Switzerland. To that end, Sakon Sakon exaggerated the idea greatly and did mock the concept a bit, which, to Frederick Constant's credit, is acknowledged on the case back. Printed over the crystal is a statement how do we tell the world that manual assembly is at the core of our manufacture? We asked artist Sakon Sakon, he took it too far. The concept takes the 42 millimeter slimline moon phase date manufacturer, a very sober model with a moon phase pointer date dial at six and scatters the applied markers across the dial, none quite lining up where they should. The logo, which is typically something brands don't let you mess with in any way, shape or form, has been rewritten by hand in a childlike full capital scrawl. The date numerals have gotten this same treatment and even Swiss made has been written by hand. But my favorite element by far is the moon phase disc, which has been hand drawn or painted as well in a manner that borders on impressionistic. The moon, an imperfect blob rather than a circle, the stars, funny little five pointed shapes. It is just great. Moon phases are not very useful, so brands might as well have fun with them. These various elements come together for a perfectly imperfect watch, one that manages to retain its classical charm, but is infused with irreverence. There are two versions of the watch, one steel with matching markers limited to 100 pieces that will be available online and in select boutiques, and the other a two-tone model with rose gold colored crown hands and markers limited to just 10 pieces. That'll be available online only. Both are priced at about $3,500. I'm very curious to hear if people like these as much as I do, but more importantly, would you buy it? Is there room for humor and luxury? Let us know. Episode 75 is over and out. Thanks again to Tissot and their new PR516 mechanical chronograph for supporting this episode of A Week in Watches. Hit the link below to learn more. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to check out warnandwound.com daily for more great watch content. I'll see you next time.